Good morning, this is KENF and we are live from Fairfield, Connecticut reporting on Al Jazeera, Tunisia, Egypt and Syria. Funded by Qatar, Al Jazeera immediately gained popularity within the Arab countries. Many of the Al Jazeera staff were initially recruited from the BBC and began launching an Arabic TV channel but was closed down after censorship attempts by Saudi Arabia. According to a taker, Al Jazeera gained, gained extra street credibility when Arab governments shut down its local borough or expelled journalists when coverage offended. Because Al Jazeera was the only TV station with a permanent 24-hour satellite link to Kabul during the Afghan war and famous for broadcasting videotaped messages from Al-Qaeda leaders, it began to attract attention from the West in 2001. News in the U.S. clearly comes from a very culturally specific viewpoint that eclipses many important stories and issues. We want to provide different points of view from around the world, says Will Stebbins. With more on Al Jazeera, here is Nakia Mully and Natasha James. Al Jazeera is the most controversial and largest Arabic news channel in the Middle East. What U.S. news reporters would not cover, they will. Al Jazeera offers news coverage 24 hours and displays the most in-depth conflicts that are shocking and mind-blowing. This coverage allows individuals to get a first-hand grasp of what catastrophes are taking place in countries like Egypt, Tunisia, and Syria. In these countries, they respect Al Jazeera enough to allow it to videotape this ongoing destruction occurring in these specific areas. Aside from CNN and other U.S. news channels, Al Jazeera gets on-site interviews in comparison to the talking heads through U.S. studios. Since they are right on the scene, there is no bias with their reviews, as opposed to other news networks. The validity in their news reports are not only supported by the idea that are done at the scene, but there are many individuals who can attest also to this statement. One person who believes Al Jazeera's news is credible is the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, who mentioned to ABC News that Al Jazeera is gaining more prominence in the U.S. because it offers real news, something she said American media were falling short of doing. From Clinton's statement, it shows how respected Al Jazeera is compared to the U.S. media because of their direct engagement with the environment that they are reviewing. Not only was Hillary Clinton an individual who praised Al Jazeera for such excellence in reporting, but was also the head person in charge of news at Al Jazeera's Arabic language station, mentioning Al Jazeera's main objective, which is to provide the most accurate and comprehensive coverage that we could by sending cameras and reporters to any place there is an event. And if you don't have a reporter, then you try to find alternative people who are willing to cooperate because they believe in what we are doing. From this statement, you can see that Al Jazeera seeks to do nothing but provide the best information there is possible without any outside opinions. Upon the events of September 11, 2001, television became the main news source for most Arab audiences. The events of September 11 and their aftermath increased people's interest in following news and current affairs, affairs programs and their eagerness to make judgments on the news they got. Noradine Miladi, reporter and lecturer for Al Jazeera, stated Al Jazeera is the CNN of the Arab world. From the first day, CNN, BBC, and others suggested Al Qaeda was responsible. Al, Al Jazeera, however, allowed the possibility that extremist groups within the U.S. itself <coughs> had carried out the attacks. According to Noradine Miladi, the image of terrorists and terrorism seems to be attached to only Arabs and Muslims. Al Jazeera played a significant role in the coverage of 9-11 because they didn't jump to their own conclusions on who they thought was responsible for the attacks. They researched facts in which led them to who was responsible. This caused many viewers to steer away from CNN and BBC News in order to gain accurate knowledge from a reliable news source in which portrayed the attacks in a manner in which persuaded and gave the audience more of a first-hand account. Also, Noreen Miladi did a study in which he interviewed people who gave their opinions of Al Jazeera. One stated, Al Jazeera is successful because it covers the kind of topics that others do not. Everything from human rights abuse in the Arab countries and debates about democracy to women's rights in Islam and <coughs> Palestine infidel. With wide coverage of uncensored news and current affairs from around the world, debate programs, special documentaries, and one-on-one -on -one interviews with personalities of opposed opinion. As you can see from the examples above, which supports the idea that Al Jazeera is a more substantial and reliable news source other than U.S. media. Thank you. Now we have Katie Shepard on Tunisia and the Uprisings. 
December 17, 2010, marked a new day in the lives of many citizens living in Tunisia. This became a date that is now, re now to be remembered as a turning point in Tunisian history, as well as the history of the world. The Tunisian uprisings were the only the beginning of what has come about in the Arab Spring this past year. But the main question that we are still asking ourselves today is what caused this violent revolution, and why all of a sudden? And that is where the American news broadcast and the Al Jazeera broadcast differ. <coughs> According to the New York Times, Al Jazeera's aggressive coverage has po helped propel insurgent emotions from one capital to the next. As the protests accelerated over the course of several weeks, Tunisian officials pr protested that Al Jazeera was hyping the unrest because of its anti-Western <coughs> agenda. Because most people in America turn towards local broadcast, whether it is Fox News or the New York Times, the message is clear. Al Jazeera is to blame for the starting of this civil unrest in North Africa. Al Jazeera has gained most of its popularity by being right in the action and gathering footage up close rather than taking the more American approach and watching and gathering information from a distance. And Al Jazeera believes that the United States and their foreign policy are to blame for this current civil unrest that began in Tunisia and now has spread across the region. One Al Jazeera reporter wrote, the events in Tunisia again show how the U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East fails to fully understand the region. Al Jazeera claims that America is to blame because we don't understand the region, and yet our policies take those uneducated views into account. But in America's eyes, Al Jazeera is to blame because they have very aggressive coverage and are pursuing an anti-Western agenda. There are obviously many other factors that have led to the ousting of President Ben Ali, from high unemployment rates to a lack of political and, and social freedoms. Many other concessions have been made due to this unrest, from the dissolution of an, of an entire political party, the RCD, and to, because of all the corruption and the political, and releasing of p political prisoners. The Tunisian uprisings have only been the beginning of civil unrest that is occurring in the region, from Egypt to Syria for almost an entire year now. However, the end may be in sight when new leaders within the Tunisian government have now agreed to host elections to a constitute assembly later this month. We can only watch now as the Tunisian government tries to appease its citizens, yet be an effective government that will end this unrest within the region soon. Reporting for KENF, this is Katie Shepard. Back to you, Fatima. Thanks, Katie. Next is Eugene Pedroli with Egypt and the violence uprisings. January 28, 2011 marked a big day for Egyptian people, where thousands of Egyptians rose up against government to ask their president, Hosni Mubarak. These protesters sought for equal rights. And following out these demands, Egyptian protesters started riots and even went as far as burning down Mubarak and his regime's headquarters. Though there is chaos and upheaval going on because of these Egyptian protesters, the United States and Barack Obama are trying to help Mubarak and his regime get through it, reported by CBS news anchor Lara Logan. Lara Logan, while reporting in Cairo, Egypt, was sexually assaulted by one of the, the protesters during the riot. CBS quoted, in the crush of the mob, she was separated from her crew. She surrounded and suffered a brutal and sustained sexual assault and beating before, before being saved by a group of women and 20 soldiers. Another attack happened to CNN reporter Anderson Cooper where he was punched out the 10 times. Cooper said, he and his crew tried to escape, but the crowd only grew, kept throwing punches and kicks. A man would look at you and punch you in the face. Though US news, newscasts were in Egypt during the uprisings, they were unusual sites. The newscast network Al Jazeera seems to have made its name for having news anchors and cameras on the scene in the riots themselves. An Al Jazeera news anchor actually said to his network, I will try and stay on and keep live footage as long as, he can, as long as I can until cops come and make me turn it off. After watching footage from both CBS and Al Jazeera, you see, you see distinct difference between two, two news networks. CBS shows graphic fo photos and footage shown by other networks. Al Jazeera, on the other hand, is more up close and personal, actually being placed in the riots. I feel these Egyptian protesters wanted word and footage to spread. They wanted everyone to know how they were being unfairly treated and to what measure they would go to to stop it. I believe Americans saw, through, saw it through a different light. After seeing footage of the riots and hearing about what happened to our own people, I feel Americans believe these Egyptian people are chaotic and can't be trusted altogether. Back to you, Fatima. Thank you, Eugene. Finally, we have Caitlin Levely on Syria and the pro. Syria is going through a major crisis at this point in time, from police brutality to innocent civilians being killed. The story begins with some teenagers demonstrating their skills and hatreds toward their government with anti-government graffiti. The punishment for these teens was cruel and unusual and put the country of Syria in an uproar. Major protests broke out against the excessive force that, was, that the President Assad allowed to occur from the military. The demonstrators associated 
with the protests were fired at openly by the military, even though most were unarmed. The motive behind the protesters was a continuation from the occurrences in Egypt and Tunisia. They were trying to overthrow President Assad because they were unhappy with his rulings. The online videos and images from Syria are never ending. Reporters are not allowed in the country at this time due to excessive amounts of violence going on, but eyewitnesses who demand to be left anonymous have all said a recurring theme. The force used by the military to control the protest is outrageous. One disturbing video that we came across was a never-ending ray of bullets being fired. The video showed a man who had been shot and also a man carrying a limp boy's body, no older than 10 years old, who had been shot in the head. It is said to be the bloodiest day in Syria. No matter the consequences, these protesters will not rest until President Assad does not have his title anymore. Back to you, Fatima. We thank you for your time and keep watching for more updates on the Middle East. This is KENF live from Fairfield, Connecticut. Have a great day.